Apparently I'm doing this video naked. <laughs> yeah, I think the hair has to go up. <laughs> ah, as much as I put effort into styling it today. So today we're going to be doing a lesson in effortless makeup and the thought process behind getting it right, quote unquote. And I'm going to be using some stuff that I was just sent by Trini London. This is not sponsored or anything, but they did reach out and ask if they could send me some stuff to try. And I thought that this was a really good brand to demonstrate this kind of set of techniques with. So I have the BFF serum, which is a tinted complexion product. It's very lightweight. All this stuff is very, put it on with your fingers if you, you know, desire. It's meant to be very low coverage, low key. And then I have two lip and cheeks and an eyeshadow. We're gonna be using some other stuff to kind of supplement this as well, because the look that I want to achieve does require a little bit more. But the main thing I wanna do is try and bring what's happening, like the actual like inner workings of my artistic eye out like as a stream of consciousness while I'm working so that I can kind of help maybe bridge the understanding for a lot of people because one of the things that was really hard for me initially in wearing less makeup was understanding how to still tweak and achieve the kinds of looks and balance that I wanted to see but without starting kind of from scratch which is what happens when you use a full coverage foundation for example you just get to kind of I mean for lack of a better term draw a new face on and in this case we're working with a lot less opacity. So we're going to end up with something that looks really organic and lived in, but definitely like an enhanced version of, you know, just my natural complexion. So let's go ahead and jump in. So step one is pat the dry shampoo out of your hair. <laughs> my hair is clean. I just always get skincare in my hair. And so I just absolutely attack myself <laughs> with the dry shampoo. And then that happens. Okie dokie. So the real step one is look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love my face. Okay. Because I think that for me, I started out with makeup in my life as a necessity when I was like, you know, hitting puberty and my skin was breaking out and everything. And it became this fixing tool, right? It was a thing I used to fix what I didn't like in the mirror. You know, I t was turned off of makeup for years and years, came back around to makeup on my own in the mindset of, I am here to let the makeup do its job for me in pleasing me in fitting my needs rather than me trying to like what I see in the mirror by, you know, conforming to what makeup can do. So what that has allowed me to do is be somewhat of a shapeshifter, right? It's like anytime I have a mood or a vibe or something that I see like on Pinterest or another person or something, and I want to achieve that, having the tools in my toolkit to be able to do that, the toolkit being my brain, well, and also this absolute like zoo of makeup that's around me, it's a cool feeling because I feel very like unlimited, like I can just kind of spread out. And that's how I want you to feel about makeup too. Makeup is there to serve you, not the other way around. So the first thing that I did was put my skincare on. I just have the Make Beauty re 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 Reverse Emulsion, leaving that in, some sunscreen and some just, you know, skin oil or whatever. I didn't want to go like crazy with the emollients, but since I'm gonna have a lot of my skin showing through. I did want my skin to look nice. <laughs> I guess like sometimes you prep your skin for a full coverage look by, you know, having something mattifying that's going to like grip or something. Nah. This is not meant to be a really insanely tenacious. It's going to look exactly the same at the end of the day as it does at the beginning of the day kind of makeup look. It is very much intended to kind of wear and wear in and, you know, it's kind of equal parts a skincare vibe and a, you know, makeup vibe. So, I'm actually going to combine the Trini London BFF serum. I have the shade Flora and then I'm going to combine that with the Victoria Beckham by Augustinus Bader Cell Rejuvenating Priming Moisturizer and it's the tinted one so it's in the shade Golden and I'm doing that really because the actual color of this is a touch light for me and I also want even less coverage than it naturally imparts. About that much you know, less than a less than a pea size, right? And I'm gonna go equal parts with the primer. And I didn't love the Cell Rejuvenation Serum, the Power Serum, but I love this stuff. It makes your skin look really plump and juicy and everything that you really want from a hydrating primer. 
So that's a really good match that looks healthy. I think that one of the things we get used to seeing sometimes is if we're used to, I'm, I'm talking specifically about myself. <laughs> Back in the day when I was used to having to wear full coverage because I thought that that was the only way to kind of camouflage the imperfections on my skin. I think that what I was used to doing was almost using something that like erred on the side of being lighter because the last thing I wanted was to get done with all the coverage and have some line of demarcation. I would much rather, you know, rebuild all the dimension in my skin with bronzer and contour and blush and stuff than to have to like, you know, pull my foundation all the way down my chest. So the beauty of this is, it's like, you don't have to necessarily blend this all the way out. You can just kind of wipe it off your jaw. <laughs> And like, that's it, you know, it's just so low coverage. But the thing that you come across when you, you know, start putting on low coverage is as soon as you start putting on the actual color cosmetics, like if you like what you see as far as your complexion is concerned, as soon as you start putting on color cosmetics, you notice the lack of opacity, right? You notice that you're seeing your skin through the makeup and you really do have to think differently about the way that you apply the makeup and the way that you like what you want to see in your mind's eye and how to get there because you're going instead of something really perfected you're actually going for something that looks like your skin might actually look on its most ideal and magical day because it's going to be your skin showing through no matter what if you start building opacity like if i went in with something that had like a powder blush that had a lot of coverage to it, I would feel a necessity. I would feel an urge to like build the rest of my face up in coverage to meet that, to meet that level of perfectedness the way that you would with a painting. Like if you're painting something, you can either kind of soften, you know, like take your glasses off, right? Soften the details and everything has kind of an impressionistic level of detail to it, or if you take one thing to the minutia, the absolute most extreme of detail, then you kind of have to do that with everything. It's just a matter of where it sits in context. So we're gonna try and bear that in mind with the entire appearance of the makeup look. So I'm actually first gonna go in with blush and maybe even eyeshadow before I do concealer because I wanna be able to like match the level of chillness and effortless lookingness with my concealer because I am going to use like a regular concealer, a concealer that actually has coverage, but it's going to control the amount that I use. So let's go in with the Trini London here. They pop apart like this. I did want to mention that the BFF serum does have a scent. I don't know, it's a little bit floral? Interesting, interesting, but it's called a de-stress serum. Active tinted skincare formula helps to reduce the appearance of everyday stress on the skin. Skin is instantly plumped and radiant. Wear alone on top of your SPF or with just a touch and build to your preferred coverage. So, I mean, I could have used it as a concealer on its own or something like that. It doesn't have a ton of coverage, but it is adaptable. And as you can see, it mixes really well with other things. So I'm going to start with VB. VB is what this is called, VEE, BEE, -E, and this is a lip to cheek, and they do, they stack like that, but they keep their own lids. It's not like you have to kind of like take a lid off and screw the bottom to the next one kind of thing. They just pop apart, which I think is kind of cool. So as usual, I'm gonna put on blush, and then I'm probably gonna put on more blush at the end. Something that I find that makes me specifically look like a an enhanced version of my natural self is wearing a ton of blush and like letting that be the star that and like my eyebrows you know things that are naturally both like large parts of my face but also like something about a flush cheek enhances how healthy you look when you're as pale as I am especially something about a really bushy eyebrow enhances how natural something looks you know it's almost like you're exaggerating the naturalness of it which is it seems counterintuitive but that's what builds the like the look of it on me. So I'm grabbing the It Cosmetics Heavenly Lux Complexion Perfection. This is technically a foundation brush, but it fits perfectly in here. <laughs> so that's what I've been using. And you know, when we are thinking about like where to put blush, a lot of times like it's like uh, Alexandra and Nelly's videos, dude, blush pl placement changes your whole face kind of thing. It's so true, but what we're thinking about here is painting on what we would ideally see 
with no makeup on, ideal being the operative word here. So it's like, I'm thinking of me having been at the beach all day when I was a kid and my parents took a picture of us all sitting on the couch and maybe we had a little bit of a sunburn on our cheeks and stuff and it's just like this healthy flush and it is not exclusive to just the tops of your cheeks. It also has this kind of like worn in ruddy quality of just a day spent in the sun. And so I'm going to kind of follow the contour of my whole cheek right here. I'm not gonna pull it all the way down like I do sometimes, but this is going to definitely like spread further than if I were just using, you know, a powder blush for local color up on the tops of my cheeks. And you can already see the way that this is working is that since I've added a little bit of pigment, right? You then, as a result, by contrast, notice the socket of my eyes. And that's just kind of the effect and you feel like you're almost playing whack-a-mole when you're trying to exercise restraint, but you still like are trying to achieve something with less effort and less makeup. And so you start to kind of feel defeated. You're just like, you're like, okay, well, you know, do I just need to like start over and go full coverage? Because it starts to make you feel insecure that there are things showing through and you're like, well, but now I have to put on concealer. Yeah, but you just put on less, you know? And you just make sure that you're not getting this like, you know, hyper contrast. And if that means that you mix your concealer with a serum or use just a little bit more of your foundation product, you know, your skin tint or whatever under your eyes to camouflage or even just a brightener instead of a concealer so that you don't end up with kind of a really noticeable amount of coverage, then that might be the answer as well. So I actually really like this color. It is rosy, but it does have, like, it's kind of funny, like they all, when, when they're creams, they all do kind of look different when you, even though they don't have shifts to them, it'll be like pink and then it'll go kind of peach the other direction. Do you see that? I, I was recently told that there's a chance I might have extra cones in my eyes. Like, I understand if, if you don't know what I'm talking <laughs> about. But I, I find that that makes like a really natural looking flush on my skin because that's kind of the color that my skin would turn in the sun anyway. And another thing, huge, huge, big mistake, huge, is just putting it on your nose because like these are the areas that would get touched by the sun, right? And you know, as much as I love a good bronzer, do I turn naturally bronze in the sun? Not really, not really, you know? And if I do, it's much later, like in the summer, and so the rest of my body isn't going to go with a bronzer per se. So I kind of want to steer clear of that. As like much as you think, oh, well, I want to look like my best natural self, you still don't want to end up with your face a different color than your body. That really defeats the purpose. Let's go on with some concealer because as you can see, you know, we have kind of given me a little bit of case of pink face. Pink face is what happens when you don't have a lot or it could be anything face, right? Any blush color face. But for me, it's pink face because I have like neutral to golden undertones. They tend to cancel out any like nuanced coolness in things and I end up with a lot of pink a lot of pink. And so when I have very little complexion product on and then I have my blush product on and all of the places that would make my face look healthy, I tend to kind of look like my face is all one color. So it's almost kind of a seesaw, right? It's just this like give and take, this little like tug of war, right? Between adding pigment and then balancing it back out with something that just looks like your natural complexion. If you just apply a teeny tiny bit, and this is the Kosas, this is something that you can get really high coverage from, but I'm just gonna use a teeny tiny bit. And it really should be a shade that's very close to your skin tone. You don't wanna use a brightening concealer right now. That would, it will, it will look so, it will stick it like a sore thumb. It'll just shine bright. So this is the 1.5C shade and it works really, really beautifully for me as just a skin tone match. And what I'm doing is I'm like leaving as much of my own under eye color as I possibly can. I'm basically just using that to kind of camouflage where that like purple is. And you could even take like a peach color or something just to counterbalance that and brighten that up. And it, that's all it really needs to be because I have a little bit of grayness here from, you know, melasma and whatnot. And we just barely, barely. We have the spot where in my, in my thirties, I just started getting one hair 
one dark prickly hair that grows out of right there <laughs> and it pisses my skin off every single time and it's just this battle trying to get tweezers on it and pull it out without breaking it off and it just becomes a battle that lasts like a week and then it goes away and your eye will start to get drawn to things that are a little bit distracting like typically you know i will put makeup right here because that's dark it's a little bit you know gray on my skin but I have a little bit of the blush left over on this side of my brush and it actually looks a lot more natural to just blend the blush right there than it does to try and like cover it with concealer. See what I mean? Things, we're, we're going on the other side of the seesaw, right? Things are going to get more complicated because I'm going to use eyeshadow. If you really want something that just looks super low key and like almost no one would even know you're wearing makeup put on a clear brow gel and some lip balm when you've gotten this far and you're done. Just understand that like each step, you're kind of gonna do another compensatory step with like a complexion product or something to just kind of bring everything up to that next level of detail that you've given your skin. But like you could stop right here and that is fine. <laughs> like I would have been content with no makeup on, but I think that like this look is incredibly worth it in the end. And what I like about this combo on my skin is that between that primer and the BFF serum, they do have their own kind of self-setting property to them, just a little bit. And so I don't feel like it's molten on my skin. It does feel kind of like locked in in a nice way. Okay, so here I have Desire. This is the eye to eye. Ombre au paupier. <sighs> Can't help myself. Always gotta try to absolutely no avail, but you saw, I'm not even putting like concealer or anything on my eyes. I'm trying to keep as much of the natural like contour and mottling and uh, you know, pigmentation and whatnot underneath my skin as I can because if I don't, then my freckles are gonna look weird, you know? So what we're doing instead of using coverage here is we're just manipulating a little bit of color and texture. And you can, I mean, this is a product that you can you know, build all the way up. It doesn't really dry down incredibly well on its own, unless I think maybe unless you have like powder underneath it or something. So I don't want to pile it up a ton and you can end up with too much of it on. And yeah, I don't know if y'all know this, but like I'm not a huge cream eyeshadow fan usually because they're just like a little tougher to control. And I am typically going for opacity on my eyes because I don't love the way that the veins look. But I guess that that's like one of the things that I'm trying to walk y'all through is like the difference in where my brain is going when I'm doing a makeup look like this is like, okay, I know your urge is to perfect the appearance of something and you have to kind of back down from that and let some stuff be or else you're gonna be trying to either override nature and it's gonna look like you're trying to override nature or you're gonna end up trying to like impersonate nature and that's never going to be as good as kind of the real thing. So it's all about just enhancing and doing nothing more. Blur, blur, blur. I'm gonna take a bigger brush now that that's down and the thing about this is like, I always think I'm like, oh, is that gonna show up at all by the time I have it all blended out? But then you think about those times where you've put on an eyeliner and then you've decided, I don't wanna wear that eyeliner and you wipe it off and it never goes away. You're just like, oh God, like I'm gonna have to like wash my whole face because like the remnants are always there. It kind of works to your advantage in the case of an eyeshadow like this because it doesn't matter how much you blend it out. It's still gonna be there a little. And I think that that's also kind of the misleading thing that happens when we see a product like this is you look at it in the pan and you're like, oh, it's brown and it's kind of sparkly, it's so pretty. But then you put it on and you're like, mm, the color payoff's not really there. And like, I'm definitely like that with like a Tom Ford shadow or something because it does have like a glitter topper and stuff. And I'm always just like, this doesn't look anything like that gorgeous color in the pan. But I think that with this, it's like the entire presentation of the brand is all about being just kind of dib dab here, dib dab there kind of thing. And so it's easier for me to kind of, you know, adjust my expectations, plus it wasn't $70. So what I feel like, that's gorgeous. I love it. It's just such like an easy low key thing. But what I have been doing to kind of make this my own, I said I was going to be pulling out some stuff that isn't <laughs> Journey London. I love using the Urban Decay Moon Dust eyeshadow in lithium on top of this, and it just gives it this kind of like fairy core grungy thing. It's so beautiful. So this is a kind of like cool, 
leaning, brown shift, I don't know, like pewter? I think it's like brown shift pewter. Meow. Meow. It's like nature, but better. <laughs> it's a very organic color, but the sparkle just makes it really grungy and cool. So I'm gonna take my finger in there like this. And I am tapping this ever so gently all over my lid, blending it all the way into the inner corner as far as my finger will go. I just wanna have a nice even gradient, but I'm not taking it too, too, too far up into the crease because I do get kind of, my eye gets distracted by that. But making sure that what you're really getting is like a nice even texture. And all of these moon dust shadows have like Space Cowboy and some other ones, they all have this really beautiful wet look to them and there's really something for everybody's mood, right? You can kind of find a wet look shadow in the moon dust for like any look. Just getting a really, really good blend on there. You can always add more. And I'm gonna take a little brush and I'm actually gonna put a little bit of that underneath my eyes as well. I think that it really adds to like the, the lived in fairy core of it all, the, you know, that's just kind of where this look ends up going. And I'm kind of just concentrating it right on the bottom right there. And I'm not picking much up. What actually ends up happening is like you lay the color down and then what ends up kind of being spread around on the brush is a little bit of the shimmer more than anything. And it just gives it this organic like blown out kind of look, see? But again, we've added so much dimension like by doing that it's like oh that's makeup that you know now you kind of feel either the urge to go all the way with it or you kind of want to just pull it back a little bit and make it look a little more at home so i'm taking that small end that has my concealer on it and i'm just using that to just make sure everything is really even and kind of cleaned up on the edges and then we're going to go in with like a really really soft highlighter so i have here the lotus radiance highlighter from sean takai you could use you know a ton of different things pretty much any powder that's just barely illuminating you could even use a cream if you want to but like i just like the fact that like the light doesn't hit this in a funky way and like look blank on my face so i'm gonna grab my bk 108 here dip that in here and this is just super finely milled, kind of peach, so it's not going to give like an unnatural reflection on my skin. And what I'm doing is just controlling the texture there, making it a more blurred appearance so that it's not quite as reflective. I'm going to dust that not only on my inner corner here, like on that inner wall, but a little bit onto the inner corner of my actual eye look and across the bridge of my nose so that we don't have any reflection happening. And I'm even going to take it like up over my brow bone right here to just seal the edges of that eye look. That's going to just make everything look really organic and you don't see any lines of demarcation in the makeup. Like I said, one of the things that's really important to a look like this for me is enhancing my eyebrows. And my eyebrows can go really big without looking unnatural because they already are really big. And so I'm going to play into that. Whatever is huge and awesome on your face, do that. You know, even if it's just like your cheeks are huge and awesome, like go with that. Do the most with what nature gave you. So for me, it's like, I don't have particularly large eyes. I'm not going to sit here and try and like, you know, build a whole new illusion. I'm gonna throw some eyeliner on in a second, but not a whole lot and my brows are what God hath blessed me with and so that's what we're going to play up. So I'm using the authored brow gel. It's basically the same as Glossier Boy Brow. It's just in a bigger container. So it has some color, it has some hold, it has some fiber and it's super, super similar to my actual eyebrow color. The main reason I wanna do this is that I still want, like I said, to kind of mimic the opacity of everything else that's on my face. I don't want to draw my eyebrows on, they end up looking really opaque. And then everything else has like my natural skin showing through, it's going to, it's gonna just make them look odd and incongruous. If you already have really dark and thick eyebrows, you can just use a clear brow gel, or if you're not interested in enhancing, like, you know, playing up your eyebrows, and play up something else. There are definitely people who like, you know, you just have gigantic eyes. <laughs> you know what to do. I'm gonna let that dry for a second, then we'll go in with like a clear brow gel to sort of break it up. 
but like you kind of can't do too much. All right, so the third shade that they sent me is called Emily and it is a sheer shimmer lip and cheek. And so it really lends itself, I think like first and foremost to being a lip color. And it's sort of a, it's like a muted berry that's got a really pretty amount of shimmer to it that's still the same color. Like the shimmer itself is still that same like muted ruby color. It's not shifting gold or silver or purple or something. And it really just feels like a nice lip gloss. It's not really very heavy. It's not even very like glossy. It might have a soft, sweet scent, but it's very subtle. Very, very subtle. It's so pretty, it's so nourishing, and it like really looks like my lips if I've been out in the sun. And I'm going to take a little bit of this and use it kind of as part of the contour, if you will. You know, I'm gonna richen it, but you don't wanna richen it right on your cheeks because then it's going to like be in contrast with underneath your eyes. We've already done enough to try and like blend this line. The last thing you wanna do is then put something even higher contrast there. So I'm gonna use it kind of back here where a natural shadow already exists. And I'm actually using the, the Heavenly Lux again for that. Because you want something kind of dense the glitter particles do, I mean, they're not glitter, but there is like a shift in this and that iridescence does make it look almost like it's a little more particulated on the skin. And so you want something really nice and dense to put it on with so that you get an even distribution of the color without picking more up. I'm gonna put a little of that on my chin, a little of that on my forehead kind of thing. And you see, we've you know ended up with a blushier look. I'm now going to bring the eyes all the way up, right? And I'm going to use a little bit of the Thorn Color Fluid from Hindash because it's truly the best like liquid eyeliner effect that I have found for the uneven texture on my eyes. I use a BKA505 here and I just barely touch the end of it like this. What I like though too is that it like wipes off my brush and doesn't stiffen the bristles. I'm very familiar with the uh, paint drying in my bristles and ruining my brush effect that happens to me because I am negligent about cleaning my brushes and painting and that doesn't happen with this which is really nice. So I mean I'm gonna go through this, they'll bury this with me because you know I use like the tiniest amount but I kind of just take that brush. I like that it's like long because I can get all the way over my eyelashes like that and just dot that there, evenly distribute it and then use, you know, the brush with barely any product left on it to just kind of blur it in. And you can draw, you know, a very, very graphic line with this stuff, but it's nice to be able to also use it almost like a powder eyeshadow. I'm not taking it super far outside of my actual eye shape because it will look really obvious if I do. Not that I think that this doesn't look like makeup. Again, it's just about it look like, okay, here's the thing. When you're talking about creating art, like fine art, studio art, not, you know, not just like makeup or what have you. When you're actually trying to render something that's not a photo, the thing to consider is kind of the non-negotiability of whether or not the human eye is going to believe it. You know, art's very subjective, but what's not subjective is the judgment of our brain and believing what we see or not believing what we see. And so that's why, you know, Renaissance art and stuff like that, like you start to see perspective come through and suddenly, like art starts to make more visual sense instead of looking kind of two dimensional. And so you can photograph something and you know, it can have something really exaggerated like forced perspective or something where it's like you get this foreshortening of like my arm coming towards you like this. You know, or that's a terrible thing to show you. Um, but like, let's say I'm pointing my finger at you like that. You see the end of my finger and my fist like that. And your eye believes that because you know that's my hand. Everything about it, the light and everything is hitting it in a way that is not making your eye disbelieve it. But if I wanted to draw a picture of someone's hand doing that, woo, that is difficult to do. You have to, you would actually have to like exaggerate the shadow and light in order to make the eye believe it because it's not a photograph and it's not reality. And so that's kind of what we're doing here is we are creating a makeup look that your eye 
the non-negotiability of it, your brain needs to process it as reality. And when you see that, it's like, okay, I'm okay with you seeing like, yes, she's wearing eye makeup, but it does also very much look like I'm wearing eye makeup and just nothing else. You know what I mean? Because it's all kind of at the same level of detail. So that's why I'm kind of making sure we have a really, really soft blurred line on my eyes. The last thing I want is kind of a, you know, rockabilly winged eyeliner vibe. And so you could even like take your finger, right? And just dibby dab that because the main thing is I want to have a thicker looking lash line, but I don't want to look like eyeliner is the only thing on my face. So like that. And if I had a brown mascara, I would use a brown mascara, but I am out of my brown mascara. So I will be using just a nice lightweight black mascara. This is the one from Fighting Ferdinand. And for me, it's really important to concentrate that on the base of my lashes on a natural look so that you do end up with the illusion of a thicker lash line instead of really like thick tips on your lashes. And since I didn't do a really exaggerated wing, but I do like my eyes to look like they're a little farther apart, I'll take the lashes at the last second while they're drying and just kind of direct them outwards so that they look more fluttery. So that you don't end up with foreshortened lashes. Okay. <laughs> now we're at the part where I start saying, okay, it's good, but it's not exactly what I want yet. And I think that this is where the confidence in your toolkit for this particular appearance of a makeup look really matters because it's like you could either be done because you're afraid of doing too much or you would do what you would normally do in a face of makeup that you're more comfortable with and tweak it to, you know, exactly what you want. And for me, exactly what I want is just more exaggeration, right? The first thing I want to do is put on more brow gel. <laughs> I want my brows to be even more exaggerated. And that's just, this is something that you can kind of try with the push pull of your own look to see what parts of your face, once you kind of do only have color and opacity and like texture to play with instead of like coverage, I guess I should say lack of opacity. You really have just like a, you know, lack of opacity, but then you have color and texture to play with. Like what parts of your face you actually want to accentuate. Really laying some product in there. And the other thing, for me, again, is my cheeks. It's just so important to me. So I'm actually going to, like I said, go back in with the original one, VB. It's got a lot more opacity to it or a lot more kind of like color saturation to it. It's more vivid. And so I'm gonna take that on my 112 brush from BK and I'm gonna put that like right in the middle. Like it's its own pop, right? <laughs> Where you're seeing the gradient that we created that does blend in with the rest of the complexion color. But like, I want, I want noticeable blush. Some other colors that I love doing this with are like the Salt New York, Salt New York Maple is like made for me. And I'll take a little bit of it like that. And I think that the main thing is to just let yourself kind of go into a flow state and make sure that everything is really well blended because then again, the eye believes it. Put a little of it on my forehead. And the reason that this works on me, arguably, <laughs> is because this is what happens to my skin in the sun anyway. So it might not work on someone who that's not, you know what I mean? You don't turn pinky red <laughs> in the sun. But it's all about thinking about like what does happen to your skin. I'm going to put some clear brow gel on and what this does is it makes everything look natural again. It's going to separate my lashes even more, get some definition, my lashes, my eyebrows. And I'm gonna kind of brush them up, blow them out, kind of model off duty vibes because because we built all that thickness and everything, now you have the opportunity to make them look a little bit more kind of messy and natural. Whereas, you know, if you just start with the soap brow and like paste them straight up against your skin, that doesn't look effortless at all. It's, it's a completely different look. It's not a bad look, but it's just different. So I'm maintaining the shape of 
the bottom of my brow like that and only kind of like styling quote unquote the top part and one of my brows has a little more thickness to it so I have to like balance them out. There we go. I feel like we could do a little bit more eyeshadow underneath my eye again to make it just look that much more worn in so I'm just just creating like a little haze. I'm barely touching it in the pan but it's all about enhancing the parts of it that make it look less precise. And then I'm just gonna draw on a little bit of freckling because again, we are, what? You know, just enhancing what's already there and I've got tons of freckles, so. Using my khaki lip liner, it makes a phenomenal freckle color for me. Like that, you know, and then you just beep, beep, boop, boop. Beep, beep, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop. That is the scientific onomatopoeia for drawing freckles. Bip, bip, boop, boop. Because I'm 35 and my freckles are not like these perfect little spritzes, you know? Some of them are kind of bigger and like, you know, look a little bit more like age spots and things like that. It's like, okay, just go with it. Repeat after me. I love my face. And I just want to take a little bit here and just make sure that we don't have the blush coming too far down. Keep the dimension, keep the blend. And then I'm gonna put my hair back down, even though the algorithm's gonna think I'm naked. And the effect is this like really cool effortless look. And I briefly want to just touch on my final thoughts on the Trini London products. My hair is everywhere. Like I said, these were sent to me, but the prices of these are a little bit steep. This right here is $54. Each of these is like somewhere in the ballpark of $35, $36. So that makes this like over $100 for this little stack. I have to say, it's not that they're not worth it. It's just that like, the, it's not the most unique formulation that I've ever used. I think that like these kinds of things can be had elsewhere. This is very much like a beauty pie kind of thing. If you're a member of beauty pie, but also Salt New York or uh, the Finding Ferdinand blushes are a little bit drier than this. Um, I really like them, but there are plenty plenty of like cream blushes and stuff out there. I have entire videos just on cream blushes that do just the same thing, you know, that can go lip to cheek, have really beautiful multiple like, you know, dimensions to them and things like that. And as far as like the eye shadow as a cream, it kind of reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury one, which is about the same price. It's not quite, it's not as whipped, but you know, a similar, a similar vibe on the eyes. And th th those kinds of things, I feel like, I don't want to say like, this is a gouging situation because like, I do think that this is a very luxurious kind of packaging thing. It, it all feels very considered it's more about what value you assign to the uniqueness of this. Like, is it being in a stack a unique appeal to you? Are these nice little, you know, do you think that that's a pretty package? Do you like the conciseness of it? Do you like the fact that like, this is the kind of thing you might achieve with it? If those are the kinds of things that are appealing to you, then, you know, absolutely. I don't think that it's like overpriced. I just do think that it's not a particularly like unique thing in the market, that's all. So the BFF cream, because they do have an SPF version of it, but the BFF cream comes in 14 shades. Unfortunately, I have the lightest one. And it says ivory bone for fairest skin. I'm telling y'all right now, even though it is a little light for me and I did have to kind of mix it with something, the main reason I was mixing it with something was because I was mixing it with something golden because it's so pink. It's so pink. And you can even see my face is a little bit pink, all things considered. Like when you put that up against, you're like, oh, that's a little bit pink, isn't it? It's all about context. So it says our first of its kind tinted serum has been perfectly formulated to actively defend and manage the appearance of stress on your skin for a fresh energized complexion. And it did say that it has actives in it. So uh, our exclusive NP Triox technology, including stress busting neurofroline helps neurofrol helps to manage the effects of stress on the skin. Hyaluronic acid provides instant hydration whilst plumping and smoothing and radiant finish buildable breathable coverage that leaves the skin feeling and looking fresh and energized, which means that it probably has either mica or synthetic chlorofloggopite in it. It does have mica. It's got mica as the one, two, three, fourth ingredient. So yeah, I mean, you're gonna get some shimmer out of this or at least some like light refraction. Mica isn't a like a pearl shaped uh, pigment particle. So it's going to you know, provide a little bit more of like a, an inconsistent like blur than an actual shimmer, but 
you can still you know see that it has a little bit of a glow to it and for some people that hydration combined with that you know that level of light refraction is very flattering on the skin especially as you're getting older so i think that it's definitely like a plus it's it's a it's a feature not a flaw but yeah it's 54 dollars, and i think that especially as you're using so little of it if it's exactly what you're looking for then you know fantastic it's a little bit dewier than the light revealer from Laura Mercier, but I would liken it most closely to that. I would say that it's very, very similar to the Tinted Moisturizer Light Revealer, but that one does also have a chemical sunscreen in it, and this does not have a sunscreen in it. That's probably the closest thing in my collection to this. It's very, very low coverage, but you can also mix any of your complexion products as long as they like, you know, agree with the actual formulation, but you can like, you know, dilute them with a primer or with an oil or whatever and get a skin tint out of them in most cases. So that's what this is. It's a really pretty hydrating skin tint. But yeah, I do think that they did lend themselves really well to a tutorial such as this one. And more than anything, I think that it's important to just like see what products work ideally for something like this and then saying, okay, well, that's what I'm aiming for with the products that I have. Like I can make a product that I have or two products that I have behave like that product instead of necessarily going and buying another one, especially if you're coming to like cream blush or something, you can use a lipstick, <laughs> you know? You can, you can, grab whatever you have and it doesn't have to be a cream eyeshadow either like as long as there's something emollient on your eyes a lot of regular powder eyeshadows be begin to behave like a cream as soon as they hit something like that it's all the same ingredients you just kind of have to do your own chemistry work but yeah i think that this can be achieved with just about anything i do really oddly enough i love this color right here the Emily shade, it, this is just a little uncommon to have a lip and cheek that has a little bit of shimmer to it in this like berry color. It's really interesting. Not to say that you can't, like I said, achieve this with something else, but this is probably the most unique part of it that I tried because it's just, I don't know, it really has something unexpected to it without being super like overwhelming to the look, especially because if I were usually doing a no makeup makeup kind of look, an effortless makeup look, if you will, I would pro my instinct would be to probably go towards like a clear gloss because it's like the one place that, you know, I don't feel like I have to really work too hard to enhance it, but I actually feel like that color on my lips really adds something. So yeah, I want to thank Trini London for sending me these things so that I had the opportunity to try them. I am not naked. I'm not naked. <laughs> That's gonna be my thumbnail. I'm not naked. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I, I hope y'all enjoyed this as far as, you know, getting to see the art math that goes on in my brain as far as what I'm enhancing, what I'm not, and you know, where I'm exercising restraint, where I'm pushing the boundaries. And if you did enjoy this, if you did find this valuable, please do give it a thumbs up so that I know, so that I know that you liked it. And if you're new to my channel, and you made it all the way to the end of the video and you didn't, you have not yet subscribed, you should probably subscribe. I mean, you made it all the way here and uh, you're probably gonna keep watching. So I will put a video right here that I think that you are going to enjoy watching next. And I wanna thank y'all for hanging out with me. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.